I had to read this several times away because at first I thought this can't be real, but it is. WWE and Bloomhouse are developing a scripted series, The United States of America versus Vince McMahon, which will be a scripted series around the 1994 steroid distribution trial where Vince McMahon, who was the defendant in this case, will be having an executive producer credit as this trial is uh, presented on the small screen. From the description, the show will delve into WWE during the 90s. At the time, Rupert Murdoch, R- Rupert Murdoch had purchased the New York Post to further his massive infiltration into the U.S. media landscape. For years, infamous post writer Phil Mushnick regularly hammered WWE chairman and CEO Vince McMahon in his column. Headlines like legislators give WWE a free pass on roids and McMahon skips through the cemetery eventually captured the attention of the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, which was actually the Eastern District, the nation's most prestigious federal prosecutor's office with a conviction rate of over 96 percent. In 1994, the U.S. government indicted McMahon for allegedly supplying anabolic steroids to WWE talent. McMahon, with his liberty at stake, two school-aged children at home, and with WWE on the brink of bankruptcy, refused to take a plea deal. Ultimately, McMahon stood trial and was acquitted unanimously by a jury of his peers and went on to build a multi-billion dollar global sports entertainment empire. Mm Mm-hmm. Doesn't that get get you excited for this underdog story? (laughs) Dude, there is, if you you go to our site today and click on the story uh, covering this, I included a clip of Vince McMahon going on WWF television in the mid nineties. And just like, you would have got whiplash watching this episode where all of a sudden Vince McMahon is in the studio and just goes to town on Phil Mushnick and all of this that you would have no idea. But if you want, just that might as well be the unofficial trailer for this series is that clip uh, that exists. Uh, There's a part of me way that's like, I know we are far from this in the, in the world, but just the idea that somebody can ascend to such a level that you can (laughs) create a television series from your perspective of this historical event that, I mean, I don't have – this thing is just going to be a circus, this this show. And maybe that is um, what the audience is going to – a huge amount of the audience will just eat up and, and love this because Vince McMahon is just this compelling figure. Clearly, this is a sign that to the television industry, like from the Bill Simmons series that's in development for Netflix and you know this here – like to the television industry, Vince McMahon is the the character that they want the most when they're in business with WWE. Like I am sure the WWE is commanding a great licensing fee. Um, there's no sign of when this is going to be shot, wh- where it is going to air. Like I assume it's still being uh, shopped around, but this is, I, I'm very interested to see how this project evolves because it's one of those that I, I'm very surprised that the WWE is, I am and I'm not that they are going to create a series out of this particular story. Yeah, I mean, Vince, you know, to this to this day, to me, still remains as perhaps the most interesting, significant figure in professional wrestling. And uh, it seems like, you know, this next few years, he's really taken a bigger step into, I think, allowing his his likeness to be um, maybe immortalized outside of the professional wrestling industry. And... <laughs> You know, uh, a like drama. this is going to be presented as like um, uh, this is going to be a martyrdom of Vince McMahon in this, like Vince McMahon versus the government. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, you know, like the people versus Larry Flint, whatever. It's going to, you know, it's 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 going to be a piece of um, I don't know cinema to to try to uh, further bolster the the legend of Vince McMahon to the masses, and I look forward to it strictly from an entertainment standpoint. I look forward just as much to some of the wraparound coverage coming out of the series itself from people such as yourself, from historians, you know, such as Dave or whoever is out there at the time able to perhaps fact check a lot of that stuff. Because, you know, the, the, it, this perhaps, will, like it's, it's a great point way, like it will shed a lot of light 
on, you know, it's a story that I'm sure a, a fan base, a generation removed from 94 and the whole lead up and the roots of how this whole um, steroid distribution case was formulated in the early 90s. Like, there's a lot of fans that I'm sure do not know all those intricate details. And I hope that it, it listen, it's not going to be the mass audience that goes and seeks this out, but there's a lot of great coverage of this. I mean, Wade Keller did phenomenal coverage of the trial. There, like, there's the observer from the time. The lapsed fan did like a really great series on this as well. David Bixen's fan has done tremendous reporting on it. Like, you, this is a time where you can go and find a lot of this information. Like, like when WWE is going to put out a series like this, like you can investigate yourself and there's, there's a lot of great resources out there that I do hope and encourage people to go seek out and, and probably there will be more learned uh, over this period, uh, presuming that this series uh, makes it to the finish line and, and such. Like there is a, uh, you, you read this and it certainly seems like this is a very ambitious series on the WWE's behalf here, but also one that uh, we'll see like where, where it lands. And it's just an interesting tact for the WWE to take choosing this kind of a story. And of course, doing it in, in their, their, their vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a juicy story that I think, you know, entices maybe casual viewers to take a look. Oh, wrestling steroids. Okay. Let me, let me, you know, that, that there's a connection there to, to people's heads beyond perhaps, you know, like, I don't know, Vince going after the, the territories that might only appeal to a smaller section of, of the audience, such as us. Um, I'm, I, I'm interested. I, 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 again, it's, it's important to remind ourselves anytime we get one of these sort of serialized types of things, uh, you know, reenactments, I suppose you can call them like they are, they aren't to be taken as much beyond entertainment. Um, and to always, you know, be mindful that the the number one goal of these things is to elicit ratings and, and it's to elicit a story and it's to elicit attention. There are no substitute for, you know, journalism or, um, I don't know, history books, if there are history books written about these things. So, um, that's, that's it's just... a really fascinating way. Like this will be a very anti-journalistic slant, just the way that this is worded here. And j- just from the description about like Rupert Murdoch, buying the New York Post to further his massive infiltration. It's like, this is the McMahon family that is in business with the Murdoch family through Fox. It's like a very, Hmm. like, there's some very interesting dynamics um, to all of this. Um, But also one that, I mean, this is a trend that has just magnified over the years that to get these high profile, semi-biographical features, it involves the subject being on board and whether it's the last dance, whether it's the Tom Brady documentary, it's like the figure has, you know, if you want my involvement, then I get a hand in the finished product. It's like, that is the power that a lot of these individuals have, and they have the ability to um, finance their own stories. And that's sort of like a trend that we're seeing across all forms of media. In any case, I I think it'll continue to be like another great maybe slice of Vince McMahon's psyche that we can use to perhaps learn a little bit more about the person. Uh, and well, who knows? Maybe like maybe the maybe Vince will have a change of heart and be like, "You can do whatever you guys want. You <laughs> criticize me all you want. Like yeah. I'm not gonna have any say in the edit." Uh, you know, yeah, we, it could be. Yeah, could we, we've be known Vince to be very hands off in this <laughs> this era of his uh, career. Well, I'm just saying, you know, there is going to be that scrutiny. I have to think, you know, for for all of these pieces that are out there, because you know, Vince is an A plus bullshitter, and um, you know, certainly like the Bill Simmons documentary, I think will have that uh, far more so than maybe something like this that's dramatized. Um, but even this, I'm sure, like if people notice a completely egregious act of fiction. Um, It'll be called out. It it will be. Yeah. Um, Like the Netflix series, I find a bit more intriguing just because, I mean, regardless of like, it's just it's it's Vince McMahon on camera. And I think that, you know, regardless of what he says or doesn't say, there's a lot more to just read into it, whatever makes it to the the final cut. And I'm just 
I, I have kind of more an interest in this. Whereas th- this series, I just think it's going to be. Um, I mean, God knows what this thing is going to be. It's going to be like multi episodes, and I mean, I, I I don't know what to expect. Who plays Vince? That's the number one question. That's it's an amazing question. There's a lot of people. Like, how do you cast Jerry McDivitt? How do you cast uh, some of these these characters that were Hogan? Like, oh yeah, all the wrestlers. Yeah, I mean, we still have that Hulk Hogan um, movie that's in development. That that, that that Hogan's involved with, of course. Yeah. Um, so it's there's the non WWE involvement, but there's the Vince McMahon book. Um, there's a oral history of WWE that's been in development for years at this point, and that did have WWE cooperation. Like it's all these different things, but I, I look at something specific to this, and I'd be very curious. Like, is this a direct uh, kind of Nick Khan I- involvement, and just looking at here is Vince McMahon, he is our most compelling figure to that world. And we are going to, you know, license out as many projects as we can with these d- different outlets, whether it's Netflix, whether it's this, whether it's with Bloomhouse, whether it is with, you know, just across the board of it just seems like Vince McMahon, who has been this very, I, I would say, secluded individual outside of the, the wrestling world for years at this point. Like you do not see him doing any media anymore. He, his only public window is those quarterly investors calls, which uh, I'm sure this will be brought up on, on Thursday's call, like this being one of their projects that they're announcing. Mm-hmm. And in those calls, you, I mean, you, some these days you don't even get that much of him. And if you do, it's, it's rarely anything, you know, it's like, a lot of Nick Khan and mm-hmm. Christina Salen. Like they do a lot of the heavy lifting on, on those calls and, and answering them. And they're both very good on those calls, but you're right. Vince McMahon is like introduction and maybe he'll pipe in every now and then, but he is not commanding that call. And certainly nothing about his own personal life. So, you know, my, my question is, you know, with all of these things coming out and presumably if these shows become hits, does, does it make Vince a bigger household name beyond the professional wrestling realm and what do you think that ultimately turns into for Vince? What would what would what would Vince be inspired to do? I mean, look at what he did coming off that XFL, you know, documentary. Um, what would it, what would maybe a greater level of mainstream fame do for Vince McMahon, the individual? You see, with Vince, like his last, I would say, big public spotlight was the debacle of the XFL falling apart last year. And he came off very poorly in how that whole thing fell apart. But even that's real, I would say pretty niche to like the sport. If you follow sports, like you might, you might've caught wind of that. This is to like, you know, like a Netflix crowd. It is. But again, like look at all the things Netflix develops and what breaks through. Like, like there's only like a tiger King is pretty rare of like that that series that just crosses all these, Oh, the the last dance did again last year as well. Like there's, Mm -hmm. there's certainly a fascination with Vince McMahon that reaches beyond. Like if you are someone that has not watched wrestling in 25 years, there's probably still an interest in a Vince McMahon figure because it crosses so many generations that you're going to have that initial interest of people to at least sample it. But again, it's cutting through all of that. um, uh, Like, cutting through the Netflix algorithm that it becomes whatever consists of water cooler talk in 2021, 22, whenever this series comes out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, depends if the series is good, but I, I lo- knowing the wrestling audience and knowing how much like even surprises me sometimes about how much actually breaks through the mainstream, how much, you know, uh, breaks through the Twitter verse. I, I feel like it, it'll just based on curiosity alone, do really well i I brought this up before but uh more so with like the bill simmons series when they are ready to launch that like i would think they have to send vince out to do media Mm -hmm. for that and probably like they'll be selective with how much i don't imagine him doing like the undertaker did where he my god he was on everything to the point that it was laughable how much media this guy was doing but like i i think vince mcmahon that's going to be the rare time that they do have him go out and do the media run no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll learn a lot more about Vince than we probably ever have in the next year or two. 